Hello everyone, and welcome to my tier list for greatswords in Monster Hunter World. Greatswords are one of the slowest weapons in the game, which means they aren't good for proccing ailments, and they're not good for elemental damage. Of course, Capcom could make exceptions to that if they gave a greatsword like, let's say, 1000 sleep damage, or 1000 elemental damage, or maybe they did a thing where they, they took the, the strongest greatsword in the game and then made kind of like a clone of it, but gave it a little bit of elemental damage, right? That would offset it just by a little bit, make it a little bit better, but they, we don't have anything like that in the current meta. In fact, this is going to be my shortest tier list video of all, because there's only one greatsword you should be using in all cases, and that's the Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword, or Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword, if you say that word that way. It's even a craftable greatsword, which means everyone can have one, but you have to play the event quest called Every Hunter's Dream. For some of you, you're going to have to wait for that event quest to be made available again. It's not available all the time, it's one of those rotating pieces of content. Capcom it tends to bring it back for seasonal events, so you never have to wait too long. In the meantime, if you're just waiting for that event quest to come around, the second strongest greatsword in the game is also craftable, and that would be the Devil Joe Anguish Greatsword. So just use that while you're waiting. There, there is a pretty, I would say, uh, the margins for the difference between these two greatswords is fairly large. So it goes Anguish in second place, and then Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword in first place by a lot. <laughs> now that we're done with our very short tier list, I'm going to talk you through some details on getting better damage out of the Greatsword weapon class, and we'll follow that up with the Wyvern Ignition Impact counter builds for important matchups since you'll be using that Greatsword for basically everything. That way, you could bookmark this video and come back to it whenever you need a certain build. Okay, let's get started with those tips on dealing damage. I ran a series of frame tests on the greatsword earlier and discovered that the highest damage combo is going to be the charge slash into strong charge slash into true charge slash. So everyone kind of already knew this. I think most people did, but there are more details to it I want to share from my testing. As you already know, each of those attacks can be charged up to different levels, right? They all have three levels. So I wanted to find out what was the best charge level for each part of the combo. And interestingly, the results were that the charge slash should only go to level one. So you should never be charging the first swing, right? You just let it out as fast as you can. The strong charge slash, that would be the second swing, should go up to level two, and then you release it. It actually reaches level two pretty quickly. And then the true charge slash, that's the last swing, right? Swing number three, should go all the way up to level three. When you're charging it, it, it looks like it only charges twice, uh, but it's actually charging three times. And here's what the combo is going to look like. I'm gonna do the whole combo right in front of you so you understand what's the highest DPS uh, uh, true charge slash combo looks like. I also discovered all of the good DPS is in the true charge slash. So here's what happens. If you land it, you're doing terrific DPS. If you miss it, your DPS drops off super hard. And a lot of that has to do with kind of like the mechanics to the move, right? Uh, it has a very, uh, well, you're building up to it, first of all, just breaking down each of the parts of the swing. Uh, the swing number one and two aren't doing that much damage. Swing number three is doing all the damage, but it also has this really big wind up. So if you wind it all the way up and then it ends up missing, you are losing so much damage, it's ridiculous. So it's really important that you're getting the whole move set out, the whole combo, okay? Some other things I noticed is that literally all of the other attacks with the Greysword had terrible DPS, except for one, ledge hopping. Ledge hopping does so much damage that is almost twice the DPS of that true charge slash combo that I just taught you which means is actually the strongest move you can use. It's not technically a combo, but it is an attack, right? And you should always be luring a monster to the ledge because we know of how much damage it's doing. Let me quickly teach you how to ledge hop. You climb onto a ledge, face away from it. Then you're going to do two things very quickly. You're going to roll backwards off of the cliff and then follow up with the button you would normally press for the charge slash and you're gonna hold it. If you wait too long to push the button, when you're rolling backwards, the aerial attack's going to change so that you don't get any forward momentum. This is kind of what makes it tricky to do with the greatsword. It takes a little bit of practice. You can go up to the training room and practice this. You have to push the charge button right after rolling and you have to hold it. When you time this correctly, you will have the forward momentum that pulls you back onto the ledge. 
You don't have to let go of the charge button at all because your character will actually automatically attack when you get close enough to the ground. And then you just repeat the whole process. Roll backwards, charge attack, roll backwards, charge attack. Again, this deals about twice the damage, twice the DPS of the best true charge slash combo. So it's always your job to look for opportunities to use it. It's not just a side tip that you can ignore. It's really one of your best options for dealing damage. Moving right along, so most of you know that you're supposed to be taking focus on your greatsword builds. Uh, the most efficient builds only take focus too, but that's okay. It turns out that the focus skill, Capcom had spoken about it incorrectly, and the last level of focus isn't as powerful as we thought it was. But anyways, focus affects your greatsword charge times, and charge times are your primary combination. So what you're really getting is a faster attack speed, and that's increasing your DPS, right? That's how it works, that's how the formula works. Well, when I was running my tests, I confirmed that focus is increasing DPS on the Greysword by a substantial amount. I tested this by trading out the Damascus chest piece with the next highest damaging chest piece I could think of, the Lunastra beta chest piece, the one that gives you peak performance. The other thing I did is I also compared the two builds in such a way that the focus build had three fewer levels of attack boost than the peak performance build, and yet the focus build still did the most DPS to the training room pole. So, even uh, that, that means basically two levels of focus are more valuable than two levels of peak performance and three levels of attack boost put together. That's pretty substantial. So real quick, let's take a look at what an optimized damage output build would look like on the Wyvern Ignition Impact Greysword. Notice that we have the Damascus chest and the rest of the set is focused around reaching 100% affinity so that you don't need to increase your white sharpness. And this is allowing you to get a ton of damage out. We got crit boost three, we've got elementless uh, and terrific affinity also means that you're getting all the synergy between 100% affinity and crit boost three. It's not just about master's touch. You could even consider taking the second augmentation slot to affinity rather than health boost. See, what I do for the augmentations is one health boost, one affinity. Well, if you take both of them to affinity, you can then drop maximum might in order to get the last level of focus in. Now, you're only going to end up with 95% affinity, which means you're eventually going to lose your white sharpness bar. However, this technique is going to work for monsters that have low enough health that you won't fall into blue sharpness before the speed run is over. Do you see what I'm saying? As a last note, I wanted to say that crit draw is never going to be a good build for the greatsword. That's because I discovered you really only lose DPS when you charge the first charge slash. I know it sucks because we all want crit draw to be a viable skill, but it's just not. Uh, all the time you spend sheathing the weapon, pulling the weapon out, and then taking one slice out of the monster, it just really does not compare to the true charge slash combo. Maybe if Capcom changed crit draw so that it gave the player a large boost to attack as well as affinity, I thought about making a video talking about rebalancing the skills, but that's for another day. Okay, let's move on to the counter build section of the video. This will be a lot of fun because it gives me a chance to show off the smartest defensive build strategies in the game. The first build I'm going to show you is for players trying to unlock the Draken armor set. Counter build number one, for the behemoth. Notice I have all kinds of defense on this build for you, but you also do deal a bit less damage. That's typically how it works. Your affinity isn't reaching 100%. We don't have the crit boost, right? So we're missing some crit boost. But if you check your elemental resistance, you will notice that both fire defense and thunder defense have reached a level 20. You could also eat uh, elemental resist large at the canteen if you want even more resistance. However, at this point, I would say probably just eat and attack up large to improve your damage output. Here's the deal. When you're fighting the behemoth, he has two dangerous moves. They both cause uh, a blight. You have the Meteor and you have the, I believe it's called Thunderbolt, and both of these are going to be blighting you in the middle of the fight. Now, in my opinion, a lot of the times when you fail the fight, one of those things went wrong. You got hit by a Meteor, dealt high damage, just burnt you, you've been knocked away, and then he's going to follow up with like a melee attack, right? Or Thunderbolt, you're going to get you're going to get stunned because you got the Thunderblight, and Thunderblight, the way it works is once you've uh, had Thunderblight applied to you, if you get hit by another strong move, you easily get KO'd. So while you're stunned, he just follows up with the third move and it's all over. So getting that defense doesn't just lower your damage, it protects you from those blights. Counter build number two. The second build is going to be for fighting the Extremoth. This time we're going with a Fire Resistance Master's Touch build, because once again, we're really concerned about the damage taken from Meteor and Thunderbolt. You're going to want to eat Elemental Resistance large at the Canteen in order to bring both the Thunder and Fire Resistance over 20, but you're also doing 
much more damage with this setup than the previous one because we have 95% affinity, Master's Touch, and Crit Boost. Really try to avoid hitting him in the tummy. You don't want to do that because it's going to really mess up your, your sharpness. Also, try not to guard anything. That also is going to break your sharpness right away. It's probably going to be the case that you'll fall into blue sharpness uh, it just depends on how well your run's doing. If your teammates are really pulling their weight, you'll probably knock them into the next area before you lose white sharpness. Uh, but it's okay. You can run with blue sharpness for a little while. It's not going to destroy your match. And if you really need to, while the temporal mantle is active, you can try to sharpen your weapon. Counter build number three. I wanted to give you guys a counter build for fighting the Ancient Leshen. Great swords happen to do really well against the Ancient Leshen, and this uh, particular matchup is going well for you because there's so many ledges to abuse that ledge hop from. So great swords are really good for health regeneration, and they're good for mounting, and they're good for abusing that ledge hop for very high damage. And this is why you really want uh, the matchup between the Ancient Leshen and the Great Swords actually not bad. This time we're going to be using the Draken Armor set because we aren't worried about elemental damage types and a pop popular defensive skill that I've really fallen in love with, the tool specialist skill is coming with us as well. Alright, now we're moving on to counter build number 4 and 5. After Ancient Lushen, I'm going to show you a counter build for fighting Arch-Tempered Zenishiva. You'll notice I'm bringing the Kolv Teroth Gamma Legs for Heat Guard, and then I'm also building Dragon Resistance since all of his beam attacks are dealing dragon damage, and let's be honest, those are what's killing you. Don't forget, also, there's a dragon-proof mantle. I don't know how good of a mantle it is against him because I haven't tested it recently. I really should. I'm going to do that soon. Uh, but yeah, give that a try as well. If that's being effective, then be sure to bring it as well. Now, players on the PC don't currently have the Cold Gamma set, and we're going to give them the same setup I have for the Extremeth, but this time we're going to swap in one Dragon Resistance decoration, so you're going to eat Elemental Resist large at the Canteen, and it's going to bring both your Fire Resistance and your dragon resistance over 20. So it's really important not to die. You really don't want to die because you're going to lose that elemental resist large buff, and then you're going to be open to both of the blights. Uh, when you have both of the blights covered because your resistances are over 20, the hot floor isn't going to blight you uh, every time you walk over it, and you're not going to have to eat a null berry every time he pops you with this beam, okay? So uh, really, that's a great improvement. Finally, let's talk about a build for countering Arch-Tempered Teostra. Since you're going to want his Teostra Gamma Armor set, remember, it's a Master's Touch set, Fire Resistance and Stun Resistance are both pretty valuable for this fight. I ended up not taking Razor Sharp or Master's Touch because both of those armor sets are going to give you bad fire resistance. Instead, we're taking a mixed set with the Kov Taroth Iron Chest Piece to help us build stun resistance. Uh, be sure to eat an Elemental Resist Large at the Canteen with this build in order to give yourself the 20 fire resist and bring the Fireproof Mantle as well. Okay, just one more build, I promise, and then we're done. This is a generic wide range build you can use to support your teammates. You'll notice that I'm using the Alpha Lunastra legs in order to pull this off. I still have 100% affinity, I still have Elementless, Crit Boost 3, Master's Touch, but if you want to add something to the build like speed eating, you can still do that, probably with the charm slot, I would say. That would be your most efficient option. But at that point, you're going to be giving up a lot of damage because your affinity is going to drop by like 20%, which means your white sharpness really isn't going to last as long. So uh, we're at a point where we can run wide range, but you're going to be taking longer to eat. You're not going to be like the best healer ever, but you're able to play support. All right, and that's all of my Wyvern Ignition counter builds. I know there were a lot of them. Feel free to save this video as a reference for later use. Also, be sure to check the comment section in case somebody found a, a, a problem with the builds. I, I put these together by hand, and I, I often do it late at night, and so occasionally there'll be like too many levels of weakness exploit, which is a, a problem I tend to hit more often than not. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.